You're listening to Two Guys That Don't Play Gnomes. Today, we're going to talk about cinematic combat. Boom! Uh, it's almost like Mortal Kombat. But well, it's cinematic uh, combat! Yeah, it might be like Mortal Kombat. Yeah. Mortal Kombat uh, actually does a pretty good job of that, of, of very vivid, vicious maneuvers. And for me, I like to bring <laughs> uh, all that style in there to really get into the, the descriptions of what's happening. And we want to be cinematic in every place we can. We don't want to just be focusing on combat. Uh, but this video is, that's what we're talking about. Uh, cinematic combat. And why don't you kind of talk us off here, Big Kev, about what cinematic combat is to you. Cinematic combat means describing what happens when you do roll that that ever elusive 19, 18, 20, uh, any, of those, any of those high rolls you, you should be extra cinematic with because you just did something special. In, in your in your role to attack something you just you, you know if you're giving a thumb to the eye and I roll that natural 20 on that thumb to the eye for that man you know his eyeball should be gouged out some blood streaming down his face if you almost took a man's eye out and then and then while while he's struggling to recover his vision and and, and you might have damaged his cornea scratched the lens up with it with the with the tip of your fingernail I mean that could happen if you, if you roll a 20 uh, Absolutely. Yeah, you want to get in there, you just want to be so vivid, so visceral, so uh, descriptive. The way that you're, you're portraying the combat, the way that you're bringing it uh, together. You know, uh, concentrate on the way the wind feels against the, their flesh, particularly when it's been cut open and they're bleeding. The, the smells of death, of shit, of, of uh, the, the, the lament of the dying, um, the burning embers from the fire, the smell of the swamp, of the moss, of the trees, of the road. Bring all these elements in and just hit them, hit them, hit them, pound them. The, the pattering of rain. You get attacked anywhere at any time for any reason. And you should be. And that's why you carry weapons. And your weapons should be awesome. If you don't know about awesome weapons, watch our video on long sword scimitars and long bows. <laughs> weapons that are fact have never been awesome. Uh, or maybe one at one point were, but it's long since lost that cachet. And... You know when you when you're using your awesome weapons, and let's talk. Well, well, let's tell them what are awesome weapons. Awesome weapons. Uh, a chain is an awesome weapon. Chain it has awesome very weapon. very many uses that you can you can do with it. You can, around your you can wrap around your fist and go for a punch. You, a you could wrap a, wrap it around a man's leg to get a trip attack. Yeah. You could try and wrap it around a man's choke leg. A man. you, you could choke somebody with it. You know, there's many things you could wrap up a foe with a chain. You know, there's many things you can do with it. We chain. really like weapons where you can you know, you can do more with them. You know, you can bring. You know, that vivid sort of detail. Like, if you watch show like Spartacus, and you see that, that, that cool fighting, you could do that in your game, man. You could just slow it down, talk about it with, 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 with the way the cut is, the way the blood. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what happens. You get cut someone with a, with a gladius in the arena, and you get blood on the sand. So, I mean, it can happen. Blood on the sand. That's what we're talking about. You know, uh, you know, for me. And I make it even better. The main man is wearing sandals right now. So I am wearing was, sandals. He was even, he was even, he was even sand attired, the sandals. attired as a gladiator. That's right. That's, I'm, so, I'm uh, that's not a gladiator. <laughs> yeah. Not yet. He didn't get any. Uh, I haven't had any levels, levels but. He loves a gladiator. It could happen. I'm barbarian. It could happen anytime. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, so hopefully not. <laughs> but, uh, who, who knows? Um. Uh, but that's but that's what happens to weapons that are bad. You know, the the, the gladiators give the weapons that are bad thumbs down. That's that's bad. You don't want that to happen to your weapons. Um, you, uh, you need you need weapons that pop. Yeah. So in that cinematic scene, you know, you got something like a, a net. You wrap it around someone's leg. I know you guys have seen any of the videos that I put out there where I'm playing. Mm -hmm. I get really cinematic and descriptive with the combat scenes. I'll take four minutes to describe what's happened to someone in in, in one attack. You know, particularly when uh, the the character is, is, is being ended, and we're going to talk about that. Or, by versa, when something bad happens to my character, I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to talk about the broken clavicle. I'm talking about the broken sternum. I'm talking about the broken arm, the ribs, the, the blood pouring into my arm, my face, my teeth flying out, you know, the, the fallbacks. Uh, and then and the coma, uh, the, 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 the Ricky, Ricky Mortons, and, you know, <laughs> trying, trying to get some cocaine. Um, so, okay. you know. <laughs> Ricky Morton is cold and lonely. Uh, will you adopt Ricky Morton? Um, no. Yeah, 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 that is the correct answer. Um, so, uh, would, would, you, would you, would you, you really want to paint that picture? You know, again, engage the five senses, bring it in, high energy, high energy, high energy, and, and just throw yourself out there. Just say, you know, uh, you don't care, and you're going to throw it out there. You're going to make it crisp. You're going to make it pop. You're going to make it triumphant. You know, be like the older warrior running out of the ring and just 
you know, load up. There's nothing wrong with that. The clothesline, the, not like his matches, but him running down the <laughs> ring and clotheslining somebody. You know, he had a good shoulder. Don't know that. A good clothesline, <laughs> a good a good splash, that was it. You know, Honky Tonk Madden match, you know, about best you could get out of him. Fast, 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 fast. And that's kind of what you want to make. You know, engage and move, engage and move, engage and move. And when you're describing, think about the kind of weapon you have. Even if you got, even if you have a weapon that's cliche, like a scimitar, you know, think about the way, you know, you're going to swing it the way uh, you're going to, going to be able to use it, the way you're going to cut them, the way. They're going to bleed the way, you know, the weapons are going to ching off each other, hit off the armor, the sparks are going to fly. Or how um, they interact with certain feats you have on your character sheet to make your make your combat just more more there, yeah, more know. more original and interesting. The more the more you get it that way, the more the DM's going to be like, wow, man, I, I don't know if I want to send him up against the... I like this NPC here. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm obviously backing off right now. I'm going to wait till later. I'm going to get you at a later time. I mean, that's really important, too, because you can entertain your game master, and that's very important. Yes. You, as a player, your job is to entertain your game master. You entertain the other players, too, but you really want to entertain your game master who's working or she's working hard for you, hard to entertain you. It's, uh, it's a give-and-take cycle. It's yeah. not It's not take, 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 and that's what burns game masters out. Selfish players, don't be selfish. Give them, and, and you grab that narrative. Just like we talk about, within the ring of fire, buy your copies today, drive through RPG, or hit your main man up, get the right PDF sent to you. Uh, and, uh, you know, I talk about that in the role-playing section. You talk about you know, how we want to paint that. How we, I talk about the, the combat section. Go really go more in role-playing there, even in mechanics, because, you know, that's so important and it's so often lost. And I see games uh, with, with players I've never played before, and, and I, I, I feel bad that that's not there, that, that cinematic pop. That it's what the people want. You know, that's when you're watching Conan. That's when you're watching Spartacus. That's when you're watching Game of Thrones, and you see that fight scene. Going, oh, make your fight scenes look like that. Don't make it... Uh, Ha, ha, ha. Four damage. And move right. on. I swing my sword. I rolled four. Oh, yes. oh okay. I'm sorry. Uh, but then the other thing you can remember, too, is you don't have to be just a fighter to make your fight scenes pop. You don't have to. Because because I was playing a game here with my main man and the frilled lizard as the DM. And uh, in that game... Oh, God. <laughs> in that game, I was playing what a mage. You were playing a mage, and, and, and with the cooking proficiency. With, I, I took I, or, or I took a lot of like, a lot of a lot of ranks in cooking. Why? Because if you're playing a mage, you have all kinds of skills that can improve your food. You have prestidigitation. You know about mm. you know about spell components. Prestidigitated noodles. Yeah, <laughs> I mean it's delicious, is it not? Like mom used to make. <laughs> <laughs> so so you, you you throw down like that, and you've got a descriptive, you got an element about your character that brings realism to him because he could cook. But yeah. but it but it also makes sense because you're a mage, you know you about spell friends. components. You make good friends, yeah. and, and it depends on how you use your spells to your max advantage to to make those combat scenes pop. For example, uh, there was a particular scene where we were fighting. I can't even was it zombies that we were fighting in that game. We were fighting something. I can just tell you how I used the spells to maximum effect. That, that's what I can tell you, yeah. and I'm sure he remembers as well. Um, in front of us, you, make sure you know when you're using these spells for, for maximum combat effect, the range of your spells. Do not cast a fireball in, in a small room. Don't do that. You know why? Everybody's going to have to save, including you. And that's bad for you. Not only, not only bad for the other players, bad for you. Uh, if, especially for a high-level wizard, you'll kill everybody. They'll be like, oh. Well, really, tell them about, and then you get the tell them about the maximum fireball, you know. It, 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 could, it could crackle and and boil to light in your hand and then as it as the flames reach out and pour from your fingertips out into the world it all of a sudden explodes uh viciously from your hands the flames leaping out and crackling at your enemy as as the as it gets bigger and bigger towards its ultimate goal we're talking about that orange arc the red arc the flames are searing the burned smell of flesh the burned sear of hair and clothing and the fact that the room is now much warmer is this Cascade of fire has just gone through there. You know, and anyone engage those sort of details. When we cast spells, I say... That's right. What do I say? I don't know what you, you say. You say, I'm going to cast a spell. What do oh, I say? I'll go ahead. You Tell me how it goes. There you go. You got to do, do, do your that. deal. Do your now, deal. What happens if you... If you uh... I mean, nothing much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a but if, but if you play it up and, and you start doing your verbal components and your, and your somatics and you are into doing your spell... Man, lots of stuff happens, you know. It gets because he's like, oh man, he's into doing this wizard thing, so he's gonna be more into it. Um, also, also, we were playing a game together. He was a player. Uh, you can use everyday effect uh, spells to your to, to combat effectiveness. I used web and grease together um, uh, in a combination to to make things slide into a trap. And and my main man here set it on fire because the grease is flammable, if you will. So 
you, you've got to use what you've got to make the combat scene pop. And I, I'm sure the DM remembered not to try and do that with zombies again. Because yeah. there's no way he was getting over on us with the, that zombie tactic. I mean, you want to use, you know, everything, you know, make it, you know, build, build it. I built like... it up and I set the spell up and then I went, I went, I saw my main man in the corner. His arm was reaching out and I went and I tagged him in and he came in and, and, and on fire and took on them zombies, you know, so that's what yeah. happens. You know? Come on, close line. Because, because as a four hit point mage, you, you got to You have to like get behind somebody. Oh, you, know. you, you ain't trying, you ain't trying to get hit. And in fact, that's, that's something I got experience points for. How many adventures we go? Uh, I think the whole time we played the, the to the conclusion of the game, uh, that character remained unhit because of uh, tactics. I think you did remain unhit. I did. Yes, I yeah. did. So you have to be you have to be smart and tactical with your spells, man. That's part of playing. You should right? also always sell for anyone that can cook really well. So my character was like, hmm, I don't think I want you poisoning me. So yeah, this sounds good. Oh, it's also really good food. As opposed to the slop we make. Remember, if you don't have any cooking, you're out there in the trail. Like, it's like burnt. Trail like, rations. Destroyed. Well, like, you, you catch a rabbit. You, like, destroy the top part of it. And the other part's, like, ice cold and infested with worms. Like, ah, this is good. <laughs> and then someone actually comes in, like, makes you all a luxurious meal. A sumptuous feast. Yes. You know, you're going to enjoy that. But, you know, when we were getting that cinematic scene, you know, and you're, 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 you're painting it. You know, remember to describe your footwork. Describe how you're moving and undulating through the combat scene. You know, the, the dead bodies don't just disappear. You know, bring them back. Describe them. The, the, the smells. The flatulence, the, uh, the the fact that they're there, they could trip you up, and so forth. You know, they, these are really important things. And uh, clerics, it applies to you as well. Think think of smart ways to use your spells. It's not just mages. It's not just fighters. Everybody can be can be good. You know, thieves. Describe how if you're going for that backstab attack. You know, you know, really really play it up like where that's the man's back hmm, there. I don't know what's going on here. You just behind him and oh, get that oh, choke oh, on, oh, put the garret oh, wire and put him out. I mean, that's very descriptive when you get behind a man and and, and put him out and and you. And you're sliding stealthily through the shadows. I mean, it can make it can make a world of difference. Someone jeered at me. <laughs> it can make a world of difference. You know, that's what happens to 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 the MP the uh, the NPCs in the game when uh when you're when you're doing when you're doing your job when you're doing your job. Well, when you player. do a job. Oh, well, you can do a job. You sometimes. might do a job sometimes. It happens. <laughs> and if you do a job, shame your dice and, and Instagram it. That's what you should do with your dice. Do dice shaming. Put put what happened to your player. Write it on there. Take a picture. Get rid of that particular dice. And the absolute, <laughs> well, I think I think he's going to agree with me, but I'm asking. I think the absolute best thing for cinematics always is the unarmed tactics, the unarmed oh, combat, yes. the brawling, the punching, the raking, the uh, the, 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 the wrestling. Because when you're out of weapons to throw, and you're out of, uh, someone's disarmed you. If you're if you've got the unarmed feet, then use it. Let's go out of man. Even if you don't use it, well, like, yeah. no, nothing can ever stop you. It's like you know, just remember. Uh, and I played a lot of bad games over the years. I literally say something like this to me. Oh, don't do that. You're going to have a opportunity. What do I say? All right. Roll, roll your dice. Go ahead and roll. <laughs> roll your dice. I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm going to pick your guy up and body slam him right into a fire. Or, 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 or preferably off you, something. You do realize you're going to get a tuck opportunity. Well, yes, I do. But that's all right. That's on you. If you miss, though, I'm going to get my attack on. Yeah, so. you do realize you're going to get press land, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, don't ever let that discourage you. I had I had two ninth level uh, priests of Bane trying to... Trying to get an attack opportunity on a man. Tell him about that. You know, set, set the whole sequence up to him. All right, so he's he's a, his character is absurdly chaotic, <laughs> and, and to the point where, like, to me, honestly, I mean, Priest of Bane weren't, weren't prepared for that. They, they, they're training in lawful tactics, you know, fighting followers of Tear and so forth. And regimented, and, and, you know, ways. maybe they can handle some things, but I mean, this is this is just absurd. The sort of things he does now. This is forty-five feet uh, above uh, Baldur's Gate, up on the wall, right near right near the near, near the sea wall. You understand, in Baldur's Gate. Uh, the sea breeze is blowing in. He's got like there, there, there's uh, several crossbowmen of Bane on the ground, the ground below, trying to fire up. There, a lot of them were missing. Yeah, but I they, did they catch, were having trouble. I did catch, I did catch one bolt in the shoulder, and I and I was selling. And then bolt. two of them are coming, and he's they got his back to 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 the uh, seawall, and two of them are coming up on him. What do you do? Uh, and, I, and I'm thinking, well, because I did not expect him he, to pick a fight with with someone with and one guy that was higher level than him that <laughs> had a bunch of other guys with him. He had like a ninth level cleric plus. Some other clerics of like third, fourth level, and then like a couple fighters. Like I think it was what about it was about seven, five guys, five, was six, it five, 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 something like five, that. Six guys. I mean, way more than it wasn't intended to be a, a fight, but you just the guy said something he didn't like, and they got taken, he got taken, taken down, down, down the buffet, buffet line. line. He got taken down the buffet. I was line. like, oh, 
Well, right. I mean, so, 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 they, so, so, and they almost killed him. It he was, was very, was he was embarrassed. The, 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 the priest of Bane was embarrassed because he, he, he got shown up in public. So then they decided to chase me out. We, we were trying to hide. I was me and an NPC. And she was like, we should hide. We should hide. So my character was like, all right. I mean, he, he, I've got some ranks and hide. But he's a big dude. So it's not his forte. Hiding is not his deal. So they tried. They were hiding. And they, they kept on, like, finding him. And then uh, I rolled, like, a, a one. And I'm, like, trying to hide behind something. It was a really funny scene. Because they came. They were marching in their heavy armor. And they saw me. And I was like, oh. <laughs> and I, like, had to run. So when they're running. And I, I look. I'm like, okay, where's the sea? Because that's what my character would go to. My character would go to the sea. He's like, oh, it's, it's, you know, you could get to it from here. You, you're a pretty fast guy in your leather arm. We get to the sea. We're on top of the wall, like he said. Uh, things are happening. I'm getting shot at. Um, these guys are coming up and like, huh, we got you now. And they're in heavy, full plate armor. And they're like, oh, we're going we're gonna to take you out. Uh, so uh, I had a thought process. I was like, okay, I'm against the wall. I can swim. I'm wearing leather armor, and I got a lot of ranks in swim because, they, I mean, my character was in water a lot in, that, in the beginning of the adventure. So I started taking ranks in swim because it makes sense when you're on an island. What's there to do for exercise? My character's kind of a natural athlete. You know, he's going to swim. That's what he's going to do. So he got ranks in swim. I mean, this is where things like this pay off. Um, <clears throat> they're coming at me. I, I have uh, some Paragon classes, so I have tumbling, which, which didn't cost me any extra things to take. So I roll my tumbling, so I'm going to tumble by him. And he's like, what? He's, he's like, he right. back to the sea wall. They're coming toward the sea yeah, wall. So. He tells by him like, and they try I mean, and both attack me. by him, and he said, "Yeah." I said, "Okay." He said, no, "You know they're going to get a tax opportunity." I, said, oh, I don't think I know. I don't think I told you that. No, you just rolled. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't give a fuck. I'm gonna hit you. Yeah, okay. I think I got you with one. You and the other one missed he, you. Yeah, one glanced me for like two hit points, and the other one missed. So two hit points to a barbarian. Like he basically like kind of like that, that's about what he did to me. And I'm tumbling by him with my and, and my character's very. He's a very big man, so you wouldn't expect that man to be that dexterous and tumble by. It's kind of a surprise already. Like, oh, whoa, I didn't know he could do that. So I come up on the other side, and they're like, I mean, oh. by that dexterous, I mean, what is your, what is your dexterity? It's not like some crazy, stupid It's like 15. It's, it's like 15. Is it that high? Yeah. Are you sure it's Yeah. I thought it was just lower than that. But anyway, yeah. So I mean, 15 is high for a man that's six foot eight. For that man that's six foot eight and, and 310 pounds. Yeah. That's a very high dexterity. Yeah, yeah. 15. I mean, you definitely got to sell for 15 dexterity. So I, so I tumbled by him, and they're like, what? And, I'm, oh, and he even did it. He was like, huh? They don't know what's going on. They turn around, and I'm like, I'm not So I had to role play their, I had to role play my NPCs. Like, they, they're they not suspecting that, that that's going to happen. Like, that, that's <laughs> no. just, it was, it, was, it was so chaotic. You know, a big they, man like that doesn't do that they either. Figured so it was, he he, he sold like, all that. You were going to be wild fighting him, and they were going to be beating you down, not, not acrobatics against them. <laughs> and so I, after I tumbled by him, uh, I said, I'm going to rush him, and I'm going to, they're at the edge of the wall. I have a, I have ranks and jump so i'm like i'm gonna jump as hard as i can and try close on both of them on the top of the wall you can get one as well yeah I, so what ended up happening is like, all right go ahead and take your roll man i rolled like uh 19 on one and uh, 17 on the other one it could have been uh, and it was definitely good enough it, to hit both of them and i hit both of their and armor classes shot. with with yeah with a touch with the touch ac with the clothesline knocked them both off the wall yeah and and heavy armor uh, needless to say one guy hit the rocks and was bleeding profusely and broke his back and was He's laid out, yeah. eyeballs staring up into the sky as his worship of Bane did not pay off that day. And, 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 the, and his, his uh, half-orc counterpart landed in the ocean and was trying to keep keep afloat. And he was barely keeping afloat. And he was panicked. He was like, help me. Help me. I'm like, help you. Oh, no, no, what funny. happened? <laughs> I, I, I told Umberly that I would bring her sacrifice when I was up on the wall. And that was part of the little mm -hmm. deal I was doing when my back was to the wall. Umberly, if you help me now, I'm the, I'll give these men to you. And so... When they hit the water, man, this thing came sliding up underneath the water like a, like a stingray type form. Or, uh, he described it in detail. It's underneath the water. And the guy's like, help me, help me. And I seen the darkness come up from the wall. Just, just took him down up underneath the water. And that's unbelievable. Really answered my character's prayers. <clears throat> so it was very, very, uh, very cinematic, if you will. As something you could see happen in a movie as a character, you know, had all spent all this time on an island in previous episodes of the series, if you will. So it was very, it was very entertaining, and the combat was very yeah. cinematic. Very cinematic, it's very good. Uh, you know, we described the beating of the waves, the smell of salt air, the scream of the seagulls, uh, the, the red fish running in the background, uh, the the crossbowmen below, and the, the vicious brutal impact. In fact, in fact, them. I would actually say many episodes of the of the game we play now, uh, Valorian could be almost viewed like a Spartacus episode. Like if you if we were if it was a TV show, it would be like a Stars TV show because it's a. Uh, 
it's got moments of you know emotional sincerity and uh, you know wonder and and there's all kinds of things we do with this character that that is really enjoyable for both of us yeah. and that, and it's there's lots of things that go on there you know the character's emotions are very confused he doesn't know much about himself and he doesn't know what God to worship and he's a lot of things are new to him and there's running jokes and things we get mileage out of you know uh, for example uh, the one the one joke that stayed from the beginning of the game when um, my character came out. Uh, he the first thing he pointed to was ale. He couldn't speak the the language of the the common folk and the trade tongue, if you will. And 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 Faerun, he could speak Aluskan. That's the only language. There's ancient Aluskan. Yeah, yeah, ancient Aluskan at that. Now he's talking in this tongue, and these people aren't listening to him. And he sees ale. He's thirsty. He's kind of pointing. And he's like, the guy's like, "What's your name?" And he keeps pointing at the ale because he wanted an ale. Like, uh, uh. And he said, "Delorean's your name." So from now on, like when my character tells people his name, the, the running gag throughout the game is, "I'm be like, you know, what's your name?" Oh, Valorian. He's like, "Like the ale." <laughs> so it's been going on. In fact, even the hill giant brought that back. It's, it's, what, what, it's, it's the cheapest ale in all the realms. It's not. It's not something that's real in the realms, but it's, it's canon for us. You know, you play Forgotten Realms, use Valorian ale. It's like it's the like, PBR. Yeah, yeah. There's like, there's like, there's like a, 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 a pirate on there. Looks nothing at all like his character. It's like ah, I mean, it was a deal. And uh. Uh, so, so it's the cheapest rotten gut ale there is, and of course Hill Giants would know about rotten gut ale. And, <laughs> and he, he goes to the to the Hill Giant like when, when, when they finally when he beat the Hill Giant in the submission and they're talking, he goes, oh, "Why is Lord?" And he was just like, "Lord, yeah." <laughs> the Hill Giant's like, "What? Like you fucking with me?" <laughs> Hill Giant, you're not Valorian. So and we we use that that that, that particular uh, particular deal a there's, lot. But there's plenty of things we try and get mileage out of, and combat should be one of the things you get mileage out of. Absolutely, in there, and that's another. Case I always like to incentivize skill use, and he has a maximum rank. And he's currently six level, uh, and and he's a play skater for a very long time. He's I mean, six level. You know, I, I make people work for their experience points and for their levels. You know, you don't just, you know, we go old school on those levels. If you, you need to learn about working for experience points, go back to the first video. <laughs> you will learn something now. <laughs> uh, so, you know, so so he's 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 very clearly earned six levels, um, and. Uh, He has maximum rank, so it's an eight ranks of swimming, plus he's very high strength, so he's great at swimming roles. And I think that is really important to reward characters who put that in there. And two priests of Bane, full suits of plate mail, uh, 45 foot tall wall, and he's he's down with Umberly. So I was like, Ugh. When, when he when he did all that, and when I started seeing, it, I was like, okay, well, I, he didn't see it coming. I made you I made you roll your swimming roll. Yes, and he he hit them with the clotheslines, so they all go over. I said, make them all roll swimming checks, basically, because he bull rushes them, knocks them over, and. By knocking them back, though, they, you know they're all going off. I make them all make swimming checks, and they're getting huge penalties because you get a penalty when you are in plate mode to a swim check. Uh, and one rolled a one, and the other one rolled a three. And he rolled, I think, uh, you rolled like a twenty or something. A seventeen. Or something. A, a, a fifteen. Like a real high roll on the dice. You know, I'm just the dice. That's without. My yeah, and he had, again, he had. It was like know, a twenty-four when we were done. So yeah, it was you had ridiculous. some. You had you had over a plus ten bonus. Yeah. I know. So you got to reward people for having those sort of skills. A lot of times people have no swim at all. <laughs> and plus, he said that. He's like, nobody ever takes that many rings to swim. I was like, well, it made sense. So I took it. Well, I've never seen a character I, I can think of maxed out, you know, in swimming. I've always had characters that, that, that well, can, I've had a lot can, of characters yeah. that can swim, but yeah. maybe not maxed. I don't know if maybe Big Tidy Mungus had max ranks at one point, but, you know, I don't think I've ever seen anyone else's character had maximum ranks. I, and beyond, like, first level or something. So I thought that was pretty cool. And I'm not saying, like, if you were a Triton or something, it's ridiculous to overrate that. <laughs> you had a Triton that had eight ranks of swim, you know. I'm talking about a human, you know, uh, a human or, or a half elf, elf or, or, or a fire gene. Or, or even something. weird enough, a dwarf. Or even yeah, that would, would be very odd, yes. Uh, so, you know, that's kind of what we're talking about cinematics. You know, bring it all in, engage all the senses. Keep it there, <laughs> keep it violent, keep it, keep it on point. Uh, make it fun. That's the bottom line. Keep it fun, keep it high pace, keep it high energy. And have everybody sitting on the edge of their chair, just foaming at the mouth, waiting for their turn to play. That's when you know you have them, when they're up there when they're... Oh, know, I want to join in this up. combat. Yeah, yeah, yeah when they want to go, man. When they're fired up for their next turn. Not when they're, man... I'm when gonna, they're sitting around like this. I'm going to roll my dice now. I right, um, missed. Okay, your boy. turn. Your turn, Andrew. That is not cinematic. No. That is the balls.